Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. Over the years, I've picked up a bunch of really random and miscellaneous tips and tricks that I want to share, but they never really warranted a standalone video. So, in this one, I thought I'd throw them all together to hopefully help or entertain you, or just show you some stuff that you might not have known about. Alright, so, pretty random, but here goes. In the AQ-40 raid, there lies a boss named Vasidis, and this guy is special because you can't just kill him by draining his health. Rather, you have to first freeze him by hitting him with around 20-ish frost attacks, and then shatter him by hitting him with around 20 physical attacks before he unfreezes. And you want to kill him because he drops the Vasidis globule pet, which can fetch a pretty penny on the auction house. And that's because most people reach him, and they can't figure out how to kill them, and then they just move on with their lives. And as a result, there's a low supply, and the pet itself is a good one for battles, so hence the price. Now, the freezing part is pretty tricky since a lot of classes, of course, don't have frost attacks, but there's a special toy called the Endothermic Blaster that you get from the Christmas event. When you use it, you can spray people with your goo, <gasps> But it also counts as a frost attack surprisingly, so you can use this on Vasidis to easily freeze him no matter what class you are. And from there, you just use whatever tools your class has to shatter him before he unfreezes. Pet summoning trinkets are pretty handy for that too, so it's kind of neat. A toy that actually has a handy function. Some of the most useful mounts in the game are the Water Striders, and that's because they can walk on water. You can get them from the Anglers faction, located right here in the Crasserang Wilds in Pandaria, but you need Exalted level, and that's a lot of dailies and time invested. A good alternative to this is to wait for the Pandaria Time Walking event to start, and when it does, head to the Time Walking vendor located in the Timeless Isle, and just buy the angler's reputation tokens. These cost 50 badges each, and give you 300 reputation with the anglers. And, once you reach revered with them, head to the Nat Pagel vendor and buy the Grand Commendation to double your reputation gains, and from there you just use more time walking commendations. From neutral to exalted, it's 96 total, which requires 4800 badges. That's kind of a lot, but wait, there's more. You get these from time walking dungeons, looted from the bosses, and more importantly, you get 500 per event per character for the first one that you complete via a quest starter that drops off of the final boss. The good thing is, these commendations are account bound, so what you can do is just do one dungeon on each of your characters and feed them to one character and knock out Exalted in one day. And, if the Darkmoon Fair happens to be in town, make sure you ride the carousel there to get a 10% reputation bonus to save you some more badges. So, these water walking mounts are really handy in areas where you can't fly, which is especially critical since the next expansion, the Battle for Azeroth, is sort of like the water expansion, and at first, we won't be able to fly. So, if you're not a shaman or a death knight, Try to knock this out before the expansion hits, and you'll save yourself some headaches traversing Kul Tiras and Zandalar. Something not really useful, but still fun and silly, is to get behind the bank tellers in the Broken Isles Dalaran. This was actually an old trick in the Wrath of the Lich King Dalaran, and they still haven't fixed it. What you want to do is get on your flying mount, right outside of the entrance, and make a mad dash for the wall right above the teller's little podium and hold forward. If you do it correctly, you should go through the wall and from here you can sort of mystify people on how the heck you got there. You can also go into the actual vault and get a nice screenshot of your character on top of a pile of gold, Scrooge McDuck style. Another handy toy that some people don't know about even if they have it, is the Whispers of Rivash. When you use this, you gain slow falling for 10 seconds, which is handy for all of you non-mages and priests out there. The only downside is that it has a 1 hour cooldown, 
and you can't use it while moving, so you have to use it before you jump. But it can still be handy in certain situations where you need to fall but not take damage, such as some of those treasures in Makari on Argus for example. You get the actual toy from a rare elite in the Draenor Shadowmoon Valley, located right here on the map. One for all of you demon hunters out there is the Wing Boost. I'm not sure if there's an official name for it, but when you deploy your wings, you get a very, very slight boost of momentum forward, which is handy for certain things like instant speedrunning or flag running in the Warsan Gulch. The timing is a little tricky. You have to double tap the spacebar right before you land and you'll lurch forward a bit. I hear that binding your wings to another key makes it a bit easier. So, if you ever thought to yourself, damn, I wish I could have done that like two seconds faster, this is the trick for you. A really handy item that I'm surprised people don't use is the Brazer of Awakening. This is found in Draenor, and it reses you or a member of your party or raid after a wipe. It works in most places it seems, LFR, non-mythic plus dungeons out in the world. It can be handy as a backup if you're world PvPing or you're just doing some tough solo content. I know it doesn't work in Mythic Plus, so it does have its limits. You get this one from the Tannin Jungle Zone inside a hut at this area of the map. And for all of you transmoggers and completionists out there, if you do old raids for certain mounts or gold, I always tell people to run them on a warrior if you have one because they're the best class for transmog collecting. And that's because to unlock items as transmog, you of course have to be able to equip them and warriors can equip just about anything and unlock them as transmogs. All one-handers, shields, offhands, staves, guns, bows, crossbows. The only reason you'd run it on another class is for the armor type. Although warriors can equip mail, leather, and cloth, it's not their default armor type, so they can't unlock it as transmog. The weapons are a different story though. For all of you raiders out there, if you're melee and you're like me, sometimes if there's a lot of people, you can lose track of your character when things get hectic. Something I like to do when this happens is to use the personal spotlight toy. When you use this, a giant beam of light will appear above your character, which makes you really stand out from everyone else, and it helps you keep track of where you are in this giant mess of people. And it has a 60 minute duration and a 5 minute cooldown, so it's not very restrictive. It's also client side only, so you won't distract your guildmates by using it. You can buy it from a vendor in your garrison in Draenor. I'll have a link to the NPCs in the description. Now, how would you like to get one more permanent inventory slot on every single one of your characters? There's another handy toy called the Innkeeper's Daughter that you get from Archaeology, which serves as a hearthstone. So, if you got this, you can delete your normal hearthstone on all of your characters and free up an inventory slot. You get this from the dwarf specifically, so your best bet is the Eastern Kingdoms and of course the dwarf resource crates which you can buy from Darinus the Learned in the archaeology shop in Dalaran. You can also get a pretty pricey pet from them too so get yourself a toy and some gold. Throughout the game there are a ton of appearance altering toys and gadgets which are cool but a lot of them break upon entering combat or they incapacitate your character. A way to get around this is by using something called a reflecting prism, which is made by jewel crafters. Specifically, it's a Draenor recipe. Now what this does is, it swaps your appearance with that of your target party member. So what you can do is, use one of these items that incapacitates you. Here I'm using this treant, and I'm gonna have my buddy Maver use the prism on me, and I'll click off the buff and use a prism of my own on him and now I can freely move, cast spells, and whatever I want. Feel free to try it with any toy that you want. 
It works with most of them. Lots of possibilities, especially with the magic pet mirror which gives you the appearance of your pet, so there are hundreds really. You just have to have a second person use the prism on you, which is kind of restrictive I guess. But the prism itself is insanely easy to make, so they're usually pretty dirt cheap. Have you ever found yourself inside of a dungeon doing a transmog run? And wouldn't you know it, your bags are full and there's no vendor in sight. Well, just stop to the guild shop in Stormwind or Orgrimmar. In here, you can find two special pets called the Guild Page and the Guild Herald, and these are special because they're actually vendors. These are super handy in raids if you get a full inventory and you can't bring out the mammoth. It frees up your bag space and it saved my butt quite a few times. And either one works, there's no difference. The page requires honored with your guild and the herald requires revered. They just look a bit different but they do the exact same thing. They follow you for 5 minutes and have an 8 hour cooldown and they aren't account bound like most other pets. Still though, it's pretty handy. If you've seen my other videos, you may have noticed that I have these smooth camera pans. You can do this pretty easily for some cool shots if you make videos as well, or if you just like to mess around with something fun. Maybe make a gif of your character for a forum avatar or something. No add-on is needed, you just need to put in the following commands, and I'll also have these in the description for easy copy pasting. And next, go in your key binding menu, and go to camera, and then bind the set views 1 and 2, and the save views 1 and 2 buttons. As you can see, I put mine on the function keys since I never really use them. And that's all there is to it. How this works is, you aim your camera in one spot, hit your save view 1 button, find another spot, and then hit save view 2, and from here you just hit your set view buttons, and the camera will slowly pan from one position to the other. It's pretty neat. And sort of related, another thing you can do is hide your character by using the following command. Just enter it in and... Ooh, spooky. This is actually really handy for setting up some nice screenshots if you want your ugly character out of the way. Or if you want some real fun, put it on while you're raiding to enable hard mode. And if you want to show your character again, you of course just change the 0 to a 1. Another essential toy, in my opinion, is the Rockfeather Skyhorn Kite. This is basically an infinite glider, with the trade-off of it having a 15 minute cooldown. It's usable in combat, so if you get caught by an enemy and you don't feel like killing it, you can use it for a nope. quick escape. You can also combine it with the Emerald Winds toy, which kind of gives you makeshift flying. Pretty handy, especially if you don't have flying unlocked yet. You get the kite from collecting a bunch of feathers in the high mountain zone, and the emerald winds from a minigame in high mountain as well. Just for the sake of saving time, I'll have wowhead links to these in the description if you want specifics. Next is something that a lot of people don't know about is that you can move in this game by clicking. This is pretty typical in those grindy Asian MMOs I think, and to enable it, you go to your interface menu, go to the mouse option on the left hand side, and it should be there. It's a little awkward for me since I'm so used to WASD, but some people like it. And another handy toy that flew under a lot of people's radar is the soft foam sword. Aside from the comedic value, this is handy because it'll bring any low-level trivial enemy close to death. Now, why would you want this? Well, some of the lower level quests require you to bring enemies near death to get information out of them or something along those lines. If you're like me, I know you like to find any excuse to strip naked, but this toy gives you a much more convenient way to bring enemies down to low health instead of just straight up killing them. You can get it from the toy shop in the Broken Isles Dalaran. 
For those of you who are leveling new characters to 110 in Legion, a handy tip is to never grab the flight paths aside from the main hub for the emissary quests. If you have flying unlocked, that is. And that's because of the Flight Master's Whistle, which you get at level 110. As you know, this instantly teleports you to the nearest flight point, but it doesn't teleport you to flight points that you haven't learned. So, something you can do is just learn the flight paths for the areas where you turn in the emissary chests. And that's the Ildari Stand in Asuna, Lorlathil in Belshara, Thunder Totem in High Mountain, Valdistal in Stormheim, and Meridil in Suramar. This way, no matter where you are in the zone, when you finish an emissary quest and you use this, you go right to the turn-in, which is a nice time saver. You just gotta not mind missing those flight points, which isn't a big deal in my opinion since the only reason you go to these zones now is for the emissaries for the most part. Next is, for everyone running Anixia out there, I got a gold guide for you. From her, you'll loot something called an Ashen Sack of Gems, and you open it, you get a gem or two, and vendor it since you don't want to mess with the auction house. Well, congratulations because you just played yourself. Never open up this gold trap because the bag always sells more than the gems held inside. Keep the change, you filthy animal. For those of you running the old Blackwing Lair Raid, you know that there's this suppression room. It has these little devices that give you a debuff that makes you move at a snail's pace, so it's pretty annoying to go all the way through it. A little trick that you can do is pull these two packs of enemies right before the room and head to the first ledge on the left hand side. Put your back towards it and they'll knock you up to the next boss which lets you skip that whole room altogether. And the last tip I have for you is an oldie but a goodie. A sort of secret command that not a lot of people know about is slash camp. If you use this in a rested area, your character will set up a little camp, complete with a campfire, a chest, and a little tent. Aside from being able to cook in the fire, it's a neat little RP tool that sort of flew under the radar. You just have to use it in a rested area though. But that's about it. I hope you found some of these helpful or entertaining, and let me know if you'd like to see more, and I'll see about making a part two. Like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.